Okay, let's have a talk, shall we? This is a talk about Trump's transition team, post-election, and we're going to get to the Senate leadership stuff first and foremost. Trump has been out there filling up his cabinet. That's what he's been doing. They have been vetting people, they've been interviewing people, and the choices are starting to come down. We have Marco Rubio, been formally announced Secretary of State. Tom Holman, of course, going to be the border czar. Michael Walls, Flor former Green Beret, Florida, really like Michael Walls, going to be a National Security Advisor. Stephen Miller, Deputy Chief of Staff, Chief of Staff. Okay, so th there's a lot of people. The cabinet is starting to fill up, okay? And here's what, here's what can happen. And I'm guilty of this. What I'm about to say I'm guilty of, I've done it before, and I'll probably do it this time. We people on the right, we're not used to wins. And when we get big wins, we want to do as much good as humanly possible. I do, and I, I know you do. So when they start filling up their cabinets, we start to look for all the bad. And that's fine to vet these people. And if Trump is bringing in a lot of devious snakes like he did last time, it's fine to scream about it. And you know I will. Believe me, I will. I'm going to. Right now, from what I see so far, I'm very, very pleased. Is everything perfect? No. But at least things are clear. Let's talk about Marco Rubio first and foremost. Marco Rubio for Secretary of State. Well, remember, first, Secretary of State... That is the diplomacy position. There is Secretary of State. He's the one who wants to talk peace all the time. And then there's your Secretary of Defense. Used to be called Secretary of War. That's a lot cooler. Your Secretary of Defense wants to bomb everywhere. So the Secretary of State's the peaceful guy. The Secretary of Defense wants everything calm or wants to bomb everything from here to ancient times. So Marco Rubio, who I have a lot of disagreements with, moving into the Secretary of State position... I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. At least, at least he's not going to be in the Senate voting for neocon positions, which he holds. And at least we'll have, instead of this endless tightrope walking, at least we'll have some sort of clarity from the Secretary of State. Remember what he said about Hamas and Israel? Senator Rubio, will you call for ceasefire no, in Gaza? On the contrary. Rubio, Are you filming it? Wait, so I want you guys to get this. I want them to destroy every element of Hamas they can get their hands on. These people are vicious animals who did horrifying crimes. And I hope you guys post that. And that's what about position. the civilians that I blame are being Hamas. killed every day? Hamas should stop hiding behind civilians, putting civilians in the way. Hamas knew that this was going to lead to this. So Hamas should stop building their military installations underneath hospitals. So you don't civilians. care that 15,000 have died? You don't care about the babies that are I being care. killed I think every it's day? I think it's yeah. terrible, and I think Hamas is 100% to blame. That's what I think. Make sure you post that, please. Very clear. Okay. Rubio was an average senator. He's okay on some things. He really sucked on some other things. He's no longer in the United States Senate. He's going to be Donald Trump's Secretary of State for, I assume, the next four years. You can sit and comb through his Senate record and find all kinds of garbage in there. I have no problem doing that. I've screamed at Rubio a thousand times. But Rubio moving to Secretary of State? I'm fine with it. Totally fine with it. Perfect? No. Totally fine with it. Why would, I, why would I take away the joy I have of the election over Marco Rubio? I wouldn't. Tom Homan, we've already brought up Tom Homan. I don't need to go into it again, being the border czar. That shows commitment to mass deportation. That's good. Susie Wiles, chief of staff, a very, very serious, smart person. No more of this idiocy in the White House. That's what that tells me. Stephen Miller, good. Now, there are other things people are complaining about, understandably so. Allegedly... Rumor has it, it's being widely reported, but that Christy Nome is going to potentially be the next head of DHS. Now, Christy Nome, who has said things like this in the past. They came into our country illegally, they need to be deported. They just do. They broke our federal law. They need to go home and come here correctly. Uh, we're either a nation of laws or we're not a nation of, of all. And right now, the problem is, is we've got President Biden setting a poor example. Um, he's being a leader who's knowingly violating federal law, and that is putting us in a very dangerous situation. I've declared uh, the southern border a war zone. It's an invasion of our country. Sounds good. 
I don't know whether she's going to get in there and enforce everything that needs to be enforced. Yes, I understand the problems you have or I may have with certain aspects of Christy Nome's record. Again, Christy Nome is not perfect legislatively, and that's okay. Her being head of DHS is just fine. I promise you, cross my heart and hope to die, if I start seeing a bunch of evil, ignorant filth filling up the Trump administration again, I will sound the alarm. We are getting a pretty good team in there. Lee Zeldin, head of the EPA, that's a great pick. Mike Huckabee was announced earlier today, ambassador to Israel, that's a great pick. These are good picks. Perfect? No, because they're all politicians. There aren't perfect ones. These are the ones you got, all right? Now on to the real, real, real important things. And I'm not dismissive of Secretary of State and DHS. These are obviously critical positions. Attorney General, as I've said, that's the one to watch. That's the big boy. If that one is flimsy at all, it's a disaster because that person needs to clean out the Justice Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And the person who is going to be Trump's AG is going to have to be confirmed by the United States Senate. Senate leadership, the, the vote is tomorrow. Of course, it's a silent vote. A bunch of worthless cowards won't tell everyone how they're voting. And I've been telling you for a while, I'm not Johnny come lately on this. I didn't come up with this issue when everyone else started talking about it. I've, on, I've been hot on what a problem this is going to be for a while. The list of potential replacements is really bad. It is. Yes, there is a chance a more conservative upstart like Rick Scott can mount some sort of a revolution within the Senate GOP and maybe take over. That's probably about the best we could hope for. But the truth is there have been a couple guys who've been gunning for this leadership spot for a long time, sucking up to Mitch McConnell, proving to the D.C. swamp that they're team players, of course, that they'll play ball. And those two names are John Cornyn, he's much less likely, and John Thune. John Thune. John Thune from the blood red state. John Thune, who should have been primaried forever ago. But of course he's handsome and speaks very well on TV. So the moron G GOP primary voter goes out and votes for him every time. John Thune's probably going to be our next Senate minority or majority leader. Saw it coming a while ago. And it's bad. It's bad if it's Thune or it's Cornyn because those two will view their roles differently than you view their roles. You and I understandably would view having a Senate, a House, and a presidency after an election as a mandate to drain the swamp, secure the border, and do some good. John Cornyn and John Thune would 100% view their roles as stopping that. They want business to continue as usual. And so likely, by the time we go to bed tomorrow, one of these two men are going to be the new majority leader. Under the effective leadership of Director Ray, the agency has remained committed to doing things independently and by the book, which I think is perhaps the most important characteristic. We worked with the NRA to listen to their concerns, but in the end, I think they simply, uh, they, they, have a, they have a membership and, um, and, a, and a business model that uh, will not allow them to, uh, uh, to support any legislation. John Cornyn of Texas told CBS News he simply doesn't think Donald Trump can get elected president. Quite a statement from Senator Cornyn. John Thune of South Dakota says America is going to have to decide whether it wants to deal with, quote, all the drama. Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. Would you support him? Well, I'm, uh, I'm hoping we end to have other options. Too many Americans live in fear that what happened to George Floyd could happen to their own fathers and sons and brothers. Too many Americans see in law enforcement officers, individuals to be feared rather than trusted. Americans are ready for all of that to end. They want reform and increased accountability. And let's remember, not to beat everyone up, because we're all in a good mood right now, and we should be, but let's remember whose fault it is. Jesse, why do we have these crappy choices? John Cornyn is from Texas, blood red. 
John Thune is from South Dakota, blood red. How do we have loser senators like this? Because whenever Donald Trump was on the ballot for president, the GOP primary voter marches into the streets by the million to make sure they work hard for him and get him elected. As soon as Trump's off the ticket, that GOP primary in Texas, the MAGA hats get put away, everyone sits at home, no one cares anymore, only they look around one day and say, why we have these rhinos? Because GOP primary voters are lazy and stupid in red states. That's why we have these rhinos. Until the GOP primary voter cares as much about his primary in his red state as he does about voting for Donald Trump, we will continue to have options like John Cornyn and John Thune in the United States Senate. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.